So mass is Q divided by C delta T. And 11. I'll just put in here, change to joules as per Waleed. There you go. I'll show you how to mathematically do this, but you should be able to do this with your calculator without having to write stuff down. But basically, what do you call that? What is that value? If I was going to give that a, a, a symbol from our calculations, what is that? That's our delta HX for what? Combustion of pentane, yeah. All right. So therefore, in this equation, in this chemical reaction, we have one mole of pentane times the molar enthalpy Right? Delta H reaction is equal to N delta HX. So therefore, this reaction, as it's written, will release 3,509 kilojoules. So technically, that is our delta H for everything. That is our delta H for our carbon dioxide, our water, and our oxygen. So, you can take this equation again, substitute in the values for the coefficients for the substances you're looking for. So, minus 3509 kilojoules. Are you supposed to do it for carbon dioxide and water? So all of them. Okay, so I'll do it for carbon dioxide. So 5 moles delta HX for CO2. Equals negative 701. 0.8 kilojoules per mole. So when you do these questions, you would look at the overall balanced equation. <coughs> what was I given this value for? And multiply it by the coefficient in front of that. That will give you the delta HR for the reaction, and then you divide it by the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation, okay? When we get to representing thermochemistry, uh, the four different ways, two ways are gonna be a, cal uh, a thermochemical equation, one will be a molar enthalpy, and one will be a diagram potential energy diagram, because from this information, you can write that out as a thermochemical, and you can go from a thermochemical to a molar enthalpy. You just did both. You went from a molar enthalpy to an enthalpy change for the reaction, and then you changed it back into a molar enthalpy for something else. This way. Like when you were balancing, if you have to have a two in front. Yeah, like you did it. That's what I mean. Like you did it without writing anything down. Yeah. Basically, you got the right answers. Yes, because you understand what you're doing. I wrote it out so it shows it. Like, but if you wrote out what you just did, did was you took minus. Oh, it's gone. Three five zero nine. 
kilojoules per mole, and you divide it by five moles. Right? So technically, no. And it's only because of the units. You take that value and you can divide it, but you've got to remember the units. So, yes, you did it correctly. But what would you have done if there had been a coefficient in front of the pentane? Would you have still taken 3,500? Let's say there was a 2 two pentanes, yeah. right? If you do it the long way, you would end up with moles squared on the bottom. So you can't do with the units. You would have to take just the kilojoules, which means you have to take into account the coefficient in front of pentane. So let's say the coefficient in front of pentane you do without one no, if there was a coefficient in 2 in front of pentane, I would have 7,000 kilojoules. Oh. And then you would have only moles in one place then. Right? So you have to remember to do that multiplication first. And then you would just put in 3,500 kilojoules divided by 5 moles. And then you've got the right answer. Yeah. I just did it the, the long way. So always multiply it. Even if you don't show that, always multiply it by the coefficient in front first, because some of them aren't going to be. So write out the chemical equation for the combustion, the complete combustion of ethane to produce carbon dioxide and liquid water. And then I want you to figure out what the molar enthalpy for the CO2 is. So now, now they have a balanced chemical equation. You know what the molar enthalpy of combustion is for ethane. So what is the enthalpy change for this reaction? What is that? So three thousand and twenty one point four kilojoules for the whole reaction that's released. How many moles of CO two are there? So then you divide by that number. So what is that, like seven, eight, seven, negative 780.35? Negative 780.35? Yes. 
All right, now, how many significant digits do we have in this value? There's five, so we can only have five in our final answer. Do we? Sweet. All right. Now, this is going to have an infinite number of significant digits because it's a whole number, right? You don't have a fraction there. Why? When have you ever had fractions balancing? Never. Never. So these are going to have an infinite number of significant digits. It's like a count. It's not measured. Yeah. Let's rewrite this equation. I didn't know I could do that. Let's rewrite this as a thermochemical equation. Right now, it's a chemical equation. So, is energy produced or released? Is it produced or is it absorbed? Net. It's produced because it's a negative. It's a negative sign. So, a thermochemical equation for this one 2C2H6 plus 7O2 goes to 4 co 2s 6 H2Os plus 3,121.4 kilojoules. So, when you write the energy in the chemical equation, it's just like another product. It's always plus. If I have plus water, plus energy, the negative sign does not go in. The negative sign just tells you it goes on the right-hand side, not the left-hand side. The other thermochemical equation, then, would be... Delta H is negative 3,121.4 kilojoules. Yes? Do we have to write the delta H R for reaction? You don't have to. It's kind of understood that it's delta H R, not delta HX. Yeah. Because these are all of them, right? Yes, but most times I'm going to say if I give you one of the other four ways and I say write the three ways, you're going to have to do both. Okay, but if I ask you to write a thermochemical equation, you can pick which one. Does anybody have any questions about that? Yeah? So we don't write the negative sign if we don't have to show the delta H. Correct. If it's the first way, there's no negative sign. The negative just says it's on the right. Correct. Okay, any other question? Nobody wants to know why I didn't use this value? What is it for? Just one mole of it. But when you write out your chemical equation, you've got two. So you have to take your molar enthalpy and multiply it by two. Every single question where you have to do, like, write the three ways, you have to be given one way. So this is one of the ways to represent information. So a molar enthalpy, yeah. So there's three ways, right? So that's one, that's two, that's three? That's one, that's two, that's three. Yeah. And I'll get to that and four. Okay. So rewrite the following thermochemical equations so that you have two thermochemical equations for both. So what I want you to do, there's two examples there. Write out the second thermochemical equation for them. Yes. 
It is a product in this chemical reaction. So therefore, energy is released. So it's exothermic, so delta H is negative. What about the second one? Selma? Yeah. So in this case, because delta H is positive, we know it's endothermic, so it is a reactant. So it goes on the left-hand side. Good job. I want a molar enthalpy of formation. And in the second one, <clears throat> I want the molar enthalpy of decomposition. So you're going to find the molar enthalpies for the substance I've underlined. Forty six point nineteen. Why is it at formation? Is that just the type of reaction it is? Yeah, yeah, it's a formation reaction. What did he do? Ink it. Yeah, took the total enthalpy and divided by two moles. So he did this. He took the delta H on the left and divided it by N to give him molar enthalpy. All right, so what would it be for the decomposition of water? What will be the molar enthalpy for the decomposition of water? Yeah, totally. Oh. oh. 483.6 kilojoules divided by 2 moles of water. So positive, 241.8 kilojoules. We all good? Um, so regardless, yeah, regardless of whether it's like a formation or a decomposition, you're always dividing that value by the number of coefficients? Yes. Always take your delta HR and divide by the coefficient in front of the substance that you're looking for. Yeah. When you do an endothermic reaction, you are putting energy into your system. So it's chemical energy that is now stored in your products. So your delta H is positive and you're stepping up. Your products have a higher potential energy because you had to put energy into the system. So exothermic is like going down the stairs. Endothermic is like going up the stairs.